about this extensively in Earn Your Luck, just expressed differently, but I have been watching the show alone lately and I have very, a very, very, if you read imperfectly saying you read this, but I have a very vivid past life memory of being a person who teaches, being a male who teaches um, people how to go out and live in the wilderness. And so this is like, I didn't even know that was a thing present day until like 10 years ago. So I've been watching the show, I'm fascinated by it. My family has always been very like outdoorsy. Um, it was just, that's just what we do. My son has like an insane garden. He wants to go to school for like, I mean, he can make anything this morning. I said, what, what's up with that compass? He's like, oh, I made it out of pericord or whatever. Um, and he's 17. I mean, like my family has always been on that tip. So I'm watching the show alone. I'm loving it because of all of the psychological and physical limitations that are being pushed in these people and just the various characters that they are. Some just surprise the shit out of me and it's just crazy. Oh my God, I love it. Anyway, so, but I just started watching it and I watched the first, um, the first season. And at one point, this guy is sitting there and he's looking at his gill net and a gill net is something that people put out so that fish can, they can get passive fish so they can go work on their shelter or whatever and then get fish stuck in their gill net. And he says, I know if my wife and my daughter were here, I would be a fish catching machine. It is amazing what you will do for somebody you love versus for yourself. And the mentality of that, the manifestation that came from the mentality, he, so here's the, the thing too about it, is he has no idea that he's like further along than most people in this, like the, the goal is to have them stay out in the wilderness completely alone for as long as they can and whoever stays out the longest without tapping out wins. He has no idea where he is in relation to these other people. And he's pretty far along. And he says, I know that if I had somebody to do this for, I would, I would make this happen. But even though he could win $500,000 for them, it doesn't seem worth it in those moments because he's saying they're not here. Like, what, what am I really doing this for? And I just thought about the nature of that, the nature of um, growing up. And this is not to say like, you know, duh, we're social beings. Like, yeah, it makes a whole lot of sense physically, but also when you grow up <clears throat> believing that your job is to take care of somebody else, which is fine. I mean, we need us, we need these people on the planet, but when you are not the somebody else also in the equation of who you need to take care of, right? When you are not aware of on a, on a psyche and soul level that you are the body that you need to take care of, you are the other that you need to take care of. That mentality can be really defeating. Um, because he's also saying he was aware that he would be able to create and manifest differently if he had somebody else to do it for. And that is the nature of codependency in the sense that unless there is an external thing that is directly benefiting from us we would rather starve than take care of ourselves um and i don't know if this is because some of us were raised you know i think codependency can actually create this where like if you do things for your children that they can do for themselves, right? Where you're like, I, I, I want to ease their suffering. So I want to like do all of these things for them that they could do themselves. They don't know when to pick up the fork and eat. They don't know what their own rhythms say because they've never had to get into rhythm, right? So there is this tendency when I watched him and I'm thinking, oh my God, you're so far along. And like, if you knew you could manifest differently than, and, and he said, like, I'm going to use this script to like, keep going. Like to, I'm going to say like, I'm doing this for, for as if they were here, which is great. 
But the nature of the gap between, because there's other people who are like, oh dude, yeah, I'm totally self full in here. And I'm gonna manifest what I need, period. Because that's a natural order of things. It's just the natural order of things. I could see his negating of his own self in that moment. And I mean, that's, you know, this is my experience of it. Maybe that's not true, but that's what the codependent does. We go, oh, you know, if I don't have anybody to do this for, if I don't have anybody to need me, then I don't need this body. I don't need myself. I don't need any of this. I don't, there's, I don't need to have this experience anymore, right? Instead of being in a place of wanting to have the experience and being a person who can step to the resources to fulfill our needs, we go, well, I just don't even, uh, I don't even want to get out of bed and get myself water. Because there's, if nobody needs me, if I don't, I'm not needed, then I'm not wanted, then I'm unworthy, and then I'm nothing, right? And then we don't manifest for ourselves. And that was always a thing I used to say. I can manifest for anybody. Like, the people I work with, like, crazy shit happens to them. And I'm like, why is it that I could be in, a, in an alignment for them and with them in that way that I can manifest for them? And it's not necessarily symbolically doing the same exact thing for me. Like, I'm not equally benefiting from that manifestation, when in a way I know obviously I am in a in a, the etheric world but on the physical plane I used to get really hung up on like how is that happening when like it's not necessarily happening for me and in a weird way now I see like I am the center point of that it was happening for me even though it was happening through my clients and for my clients it was actually happening um in my direction in my awareness so that's pretty cool because that shows you a lot of possibility but I just want to say that if you're sitting back going, I know I can manifest if somebody needed me to, and you're negating wanting yourself in the process because you go, there's no point to doing any of this if like nobody needs me. Um, you came into the planet as a wanting being. You came into the planet wanting to come. You weren't necessarily needed on the planet. You're needed in the entire sphere of the universe because you are one of the one right you are needed you are necessary but it was not needed for you to incarnate that was a wanting and a lot of us lose that in our learning to relate to people only through needs and only through meeting needs and having needs met so i just want you say that there's two ends of the spectrum. There's the one end where, you, where there's the father that goes, if my child was here, I would be able to manifest any of this. And then there's the other end where the child is going, I never learned to fish. I never learned to do any of this because the whole time, um, you know, you were trying to create something for me instead of creating it for yourself and showing me what you created for yourself so that I could learn to create for myself, right? Um, so just be aware, that's all. Just be aware that the codependent is probably gonna be the person sitting on the edge of the river looking at an empty net going, uh, if I had uh, somebody to need me to find fish, I could find fish. But because I don't value my own self, there's not really a point to me finding fish here, right? Um, and that is disordered. Because you could see, if you watch the show alone, all these other people who are like, not saying that that dude was disordered. Oh my God, he was like my favorite, to be honest. But um, there's other people who feel self-fulfilled, self-sufficient. They feel one with the land. They feel supported by the land. And I think that's the inner work of this process, right? Is to change the inner territory in a way in which we are resourced and resourceful and we are resource, right? Um, and that we do it because we are wanting to be where we are instead of because somebody needs us um, to be what they need us to be for some reason, right? Totally different energy. Even when he said it, he was like, I'm gonna use this thought to like catch more fish, which was great, but just even needing the thought was so interesting to me because it's so familiar to me, right? So get out of water or get out of bed, get yourself water, like care about yourself. Um, even when it appears that the external world is telling you that you need to be fixed, you don't have to believe I need to be fixed because they're telling me that, or I need to fix this situation. Just care about yourself, care about your situation.
like care um, and don't rely on somebody else to care for you to determine whether you are worthy of being cared about. Because like I always say, self, self love um, and self care are very often in our culture perpetuated by a self hate, which is trying to fix the self instead of actually care for the self. So uh, there's that. All right. I hope this makes sense. Bye guys.